When you think of a Kraken attack, you probably imagine something like this. Or this. Or maybe even this. Who knows? <laughs> the Deep Space Kraken is a legendary creature that basically does whatever the heck it wants. Usually that means ripping your spaceships and Kerbals apart. Essentially, it's not there to ruin the game, it's there to ruin your game. Tons of KSP players pretty much worship the Kraken as the cruel god of KSP. In reality though, it's just glitches in the game. Like the wiggle your rocket until it blows up Kraken is just a part clipping bug. But what if it wasn't a glitch? What if the Kraken is actually part of the game? Wait, don't click off the video yet. Hear me out. There's a lot of evidence for this actually being true. The first thing you're probably all thinking of is the Kraken on Bop, but there's actually even more than that. The in-game description of Bop tells us a lot about what the Kraken is. In an early KSP update, they added a system officially called Kraken's Bane into the game. So basically the Kraken is real, like it's a part of the game. What do we know about it? One of the best places to look for clues is Danny2462's channel, because he's basically a Kraken hunter. No, seriously, he's destroyed planets with the Kraken before. This guy's no joke. So one of his most iconic ways to summon the Kraken is spaghettifying Kerbals. In real life, spaghettification happens when you go too close to a black hole and the tide is so strong that you get stretched into a thin string of particles like a spaghetti noodle. Get it? Spaghettification. But here's the thing. In KSP, spaghetti noodles must have a different shape because their version is more like getting smeared across space-time. The Kraken takes hold of their physical form and makes them transcend to a higher plane of existence, which means they can get stretched the size of a planet before they just get obliterated. But things get a lot more intense from there. Danny found a lot more Krakens than that. My favorite video he's ever done is called Planet Crumpling, where he basically glitched Kerbin out of existence. In another video, he literally sent a Kerbal 9 trillion times light speed. Here's the thing though. If you've seen a lot of his videos, you'll know two things. He can't build helicopters, and the only planet the Kraken has never been able to destroy is Jewel. Seems like there's a connection there. And here's another interesting tidbit. Bop is pretty close to Jewel. So someone might be asking, does that mean Jewel is the center of the Kraken's power? And to that I would say, of course not, you dingus, because science says that there's no significant difference between the number of Kraken attacks that happen there compared to everywhere else. Take that, you hypothetical freakwad. But it's true that the Kraken actually used to be there at some point. Enter the dead Kraken on Bop. But the sad thing is that the hints seem to end there. Rewind a little. Spaghettification. There's a couple things we can learn from it. First, the Kraken's favorite thing is to take physical things and blast them full of Kraken juice, which makes it go completely nuts and rip itself apart. To say it in a creepy way, the Kraken possesses them, and they're now a Kraken host. What does this mean? Well, that the Kraken doesn't have a physical form. It's transcended, like the Kerbals in Danny's space program. But wait a second, you thought it had a body left on Bop. Well, it's only logical to assume that the Kraken used to have a physical form, and then it died at some point, and it transcended, and then became an even scarier monster. There, problem solved. Any questions? You in the back. Where did the Kraken come from? Well, that one's harder to answer, but the KSP devs gave us some clues. For example, there's a handful of Kerbal animations on the KSP YouTube channel. And guess what? One of them explains the origin story of the Kraken, if we read between the lines. It's kind of terrifying though, so I suggest not watching this at night in your room all alone. Anywho, the animation starts with a little squid thingy that escaped its mediocre fish tank and fell into a big thing of mystery goo. When Werner von Kerwin pulled it out, it was glowing mysteriously. When they left it in the lab, it escaped its mediocre fish tank again and climbed into a science junior module. If you look at the comments of the video, you'll notice that almost all of them are about the Kraken. Scott Manley himself said clearly that experimental package was on its way to Bop. So basically, the Kraken was created by the Kerbals. That's it, scary part's over. You can come out from under your bed now. But wait a second, if the Kraken was sent to bop by the Kerbals, that means they must have already been pretty advanced by the time the Kraken came around. And that doesn't work. I know, cause you can spaghettify Kerbals with time warp literally on day one of starting a new game. The Kraken existed way before the Kraken existed. What the heck happened to time? Well, the Kraken probably ate it. When it transcended, maybe time lost meaning to it, so it became an infinite, eternal being. So in a way, Krakens just are. They've always been. They always will be. But let's get back to Bop. We already know that this isn't the place where the Kraken is centered because science tells us so. So where does the Kraken live now, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Kraken attacks seem to be mainly centered around, wait for it, 
the sun. Think about it. Kraken attacks are more common when you're in orbit of the sun. Danny teleported a rover to the surface of the sun. And he also created one of the only stable hosts for the Kraken ever on the sun. When you get too close to the sun, you get vaporized. Okay, that one might be because of nuclear fusion, but you get the point. And guess what? There's a sun temple in the desert, almost like they're worshipping their cruel god. Maybe it's a bit of a stretch to say that the Kraken is cruel though. If it's just the transcended form of a baby squid, maybe it's kind of like a kid that likes explosions. After all, it's not all bad. Smart people figured out that you can use Kraken juice to make infinite Delta V. I actually used Kraken Drive to fly to Duna in six hours and that video is conveniently located in the top right hand corner. Also, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Just subscribe. So we have two choices to make. The first one is whether or not to press that little red button down there. The second is what we choose to see the Kraken as. Is it an all powerful ferocious monster that demands sacrifice or is it a little kid? It just hasn't learned yet. Also, Hail Kraken.